Yeah, so I just want to uh, make a short video about um, my understanding of climate change. Um, I hold an extreme view of that, like like a more of a doomsday in the near term. Um, you know, within five years, or maybe much less than that, maybe next year. So I thought, well, why do I think that, and other people think we've got you know, decades or, or much longer. And we all have the same facts. We've all got the same search engines like Google to look up the information. Um, I suppose it's not, not really true to say we all, all have the same facts because some of us have researched it in different directions, gone into more detail. But I, I think you can boil it down, right down to the, to the chart of average world temperatures. Um, if you draw your own projection of the exponential curve of average world temperature, you can see that over the next few years, it's going to jump up, uh, not just a part of a degree Celsius, but multiple degrees Celsius before, say, 2025. Um, and when you watch the news, they always, um, you know, seem to paint a linear progression of average world temperature so that, you know, it's not going to jump up a few degrees till late in the century. And they always talk about, you know, 2050, 2100, even on, um, you know, the BBC, The Guardian, New York Times. Um, so fairly left-wing sort of uh, media sources. So the view, the abrupt climate change view that I hold um, isn't talked about on the media. Um, or in Australia on the ABC, climate change is talked about a lot. But they never talk about an incoming doomsday. They say, yeah, it could be catastrophic down the track. Um, they, never, they never suggest that your kids aren't going to grow up or that we're not going to live a full life. Um, Okay, so look, the, the temperature is going up rapidly, and you can go into why that is. Okay, obviously CO two is a greenhouse gas. Um, you know, in two thousand eighteen, we're pumping out more greenhouse gas than ever before. Um, but also, there's a lot of a lot of the consequences of of our um, emissions haven't actually manifested themselves because it takes at least uh, 10, 20 years. I've heard different numbers, even 40 years um, for our emissions to actually translate into average world temperature warming, uh, which makes sense because when you put, you know, some water, a pot of water on the stove, obviously it takes a, quite a while for the water to start boiling. But then you've got uh, methane. And again, methane molecule per molecule is a hundred times more potent as a greenhouse gas than CO2. Um, methane also has a faster action. Um, and there's plenty of it, right? We know there's hundreds of gigatons um, set for release in the Arctic. Um, some people argue that it's not going to release. Um, Maybe that's an area of debate, but look, we, we can't deny that all this greenhouse gas is there in the Arctic and other places around the world, all over the world, really, such as with fracking and, um, and with pig farms, cattle farms. But, um, yeah, part of the evidence is, is with N Natalia Shakova, who's one of the top experts on the issue. Um, you know, she's a professor of chemical oceanography, um, and she's saying that look, it's any time there could be this burst of methane, like fifty gigatons, um, or something like that, which which will um, end life as we know it. Um, so the the methane is, is part of the reason why average world temperature is exponential. 
Um, another big one is the Blue Ocean event. I mean, the, the Arctic sea ice has already shrunk. Uh, you know, most of it's already gone relative to 1960 in terms of volume. Um, the extent currently is still millions of square kilometres. It's actually quite quite vast in terms of extent compared with, say, five years ago. But you need to factor in the, the thickness. Uh, most of it, most of the sea ice is less than a metre thick. Um, so it'll be surprising if um, we can last another year or two without having a, a completely um, ice-free Arctic Ocean. Okay, so what does that do? That releases uh, latent heat, which means all the energy that was going into melting the ice suddenly goes into heating up the water. Uh, you've got reduced albedo, which means that the, there's more sunlight being absorbed into the ocean rather than being reflected back out into space. And, um, you know, there's other feedbacks like um, the moistening of the troposphere. Uh, we already know that um, the air is much more humid than it used to be. You can look up the, you know, the exact percentage changes, uh, which has which is caused these hurricanes to be a lot more, um, to hold a lot more water, um, to create these, this rain bomb phenomenon or, you know, just heavy flooding in Pakistan or India. Um, yeah, so this, this extra moisture also traps heat because the number one greenhouse gas is, is H2O, water, right? So, so with the Blue Ocean event, release of the methane, extra humidity, um, and plus other factors I haven't even looked into. Um, we, we know that the average world temperature is going up and up and up. We don't have any technology to stop it. Um, there's, there's ideas about geoengineering, but they haven't been proven to work. And at least there's going to be a lot of problems that <clears throat> if, you, if you block out the, the sky with chemicals. Um, you know, it, it creates an unnatural environment. Okay, so once you accept that multiple degrees Celsius is going to happen within the near future, then you just need to understand the consequences. So there's going to be, as I said, there's going to be more, more severe storms because of the extra water, more tropical conditions. Uh, there's other problems like more diseases, like malaria, Zika, um, drought, um, you know, reduced uh, grain harvests. Um, yes, yeah, so all these sorts of things can cause collapse of, of a civilization. This sort of thing, like collapse of worldwide collapse of corn, wheat, soybeans, oats will cause mass starvation and, and, and will kill billions of people. There'll still be food growing. You can grow you know, food on your windowsill, that sort of thing, under the house or whatever. But if, if the grain crop um, dies, like in, in southern Russia, America, Brazil, uh, that's going you know, to kill million, billions. Keep in mind that a lot of countries around the world are net importers of food. Even Australia is a, is a net importer. It didn't used to be that way. You look at company, countries like Japan and the United Kingdom, heavily dependent on uh, importing their food. So what are they going to do? You know, what are they going to do if you know, the food gets too expensive or too scarce? Um, it's hard to imagine the violence... It could take place. Um, yes, yeah, so a lot more violence, uh, collapse of the financial system. Um, you know, a lot of economists are, pred are predicting that the the U.S. stock market will crash even harder than it did in 1929. All all the indicators are there. We know we know it for a fact that that the stock market is 
is inflated. The the, uh, the value of stocks is is way more than than uh, the hard value, hard cash value. Okay, so um, thanks very much.